Pastor Solomon Zambo from Cameroon, Africa, who's here to share what God's laid on his heart today. Let's go, brother. Right? You'll see that in a minute. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Somebody asked me a question, Solomon. How do you feel? I say, I'm still on. And I know one day the Lord will off me. And I want you to let go. That's my theme of message today. Technology was an old technology. And now you have great technology in this church. It did not work, my clipper. So I will try to do my best to present to you the burden God has put in my heart. And I'm so happy this morning because this church is so special to me. You don't know why. Do you know that our church in Cameroon is called Grace Bible Church? This is our presidential decree from our president. He authorized in 1990. Before you change your name, we were already Grace Bible Church. So you owe us something. This is amazing. I only found it this time. Number two, this church is so special. When I see my African brothers, I feel my skin. I feel myself in this church. And I've been praying for them. One day God will send missionaries here that will minister to my African brothers who are in America. This church is so special for me because Pastor Tom Rickard, you don't know, and Janelle used to be dear and are still dear friends of mine. And today, Pastor Aaron, that I did not know before, his daughter, Elizabeth, watches over me for two years now. She checks me all the time. Pastor Solomon, how are you doing? You don't know what it can make in somebody's mind when you know a thousand miles and somebody's there thinking of you. Pastor Solomon, what can I pray for you? What a great ministry. I have in this church. This church is so special for me because the man that monitored me, mentored me to become what I am, was led to Christ by Pastor Paul, one of the former pastors of this church, and that man is Keith Merriman. This church is so dear to me. This church is so dear to me because I used to have a very close friend and father who has come to my house, who knows the conditions of my life for years, has been just a photographer and a CGBCI reporter of all the missionary trips. Jim March and his beloved wife, my mother, is in this church. This church is so dear to me. This church is so dear to me because I see a man who has the fire and the vision in him. Pastor Aaron, as an evangelist like me, ready to help the CGBCI. Because I'm telling you, we need people like this to come back and revive some aspect in the CGBCI that need to wake up. We can't leave that CGBCI like this. God has given us a structure, an organization, a mission, place where we can go and fix things. We can fix them. And I'm telling you, I saw Brian Marley and I saw Pastor, uh, 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 you know, Aaron, and I said, they are like twin brothers. They all have the same burden. Let's come back and fix things. We need to change the way we see things. We need to change the way. It can't be the same way. You know what? You like the hymns like me. We are the old generation. I like to sing hymns. But I'm telling you, if we keep me singing the hymns, the young generation, don't, they don't tolerate hymns anymore in the same way like us. We like to take the book and read. But you know what? If you don't follow them in their next church, they are not sinning by praising without the book. If you don't follow them, you keep the move. You don't the way they are. You lose them. So sometimes we need to compromise 
by accepting to be singing with our books and worship the Lord. This church is so deep in my heart. Because this church supports me, number one church in the whole America. But they don't support Solomon Zabo. <laughs> this church supports a man called by God in 1993. He was deep in his sin, terrible, in Africa, far away in the forest. God picked me out and said, you will bring the gospel, not only in Africa, they're all over the world. This church is number one top supporter for that one. Today, I want Pastor Aaron to help me reading in American accent. I promise you, in two years' time, when the Lord brings me back here, maybe, I will preach in American accent. I'm going to use part of my support to go to American teaching, English teaching school. I'm going to learn English now. I'm tired for Brian Marley to look at me and say, Solomon, I don't understand your accent. I say, I should follow Thompson. I said, I should follow Thompson. I say, I speak French. You can't speak French. So you need to understand that I'm struggling to speak your English. But I will speak English because I want to minister to my brothers. Let's turn our Bible this morning in the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 34. Uh, it should be 28 to 34, okay? So turn your Bible with me, John, and Mark chapter 8, verse 28 to 34. So you, I'm sorry for my African accent, because I will speak like American. I'm going to speak. Rah, rah, rah. I will talk like that. Okay, let's read the Bible. He will be helping me to read, because I have one main goal, one thing to say today, only one thing to you and I. As we read this text, and we will have like nine texts together. We are going to read the Bible, and I will challenge you and I in those verses. Okay? Ready? Let's go. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. I think everything says in this text. The Lord Jesus Christ said, if you want to follow me, don't look behind. The Lord Jesus Christ said, don't try to save your life on earth. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you know what? You will never profit to gain the whole world. But if you miss your soul, the Lord Jesus Christ said, the soul of a human being is more important than anything in this world. The Lord Jesus Christ said, the salvation of one soul is more important than anything that we can do. Our plans of vacation, our plans to make money, to build houses, to be married, to have children, to have, build, buy a night house. Every plan that we have in this world are nothing comparatively, comparatively to the soul, the salvation of one soul. And I come to challenge you today. I'm tired to see the churches with the same numbers of people. I'm tired to go to Africa and see the pastors complaining. We don't have money. We don't have food. We need to go to America and make money. We need to do this. We need to do this. Stop it. There is only one goal. There's only one agenda. There's only one thing you and I should do. Jesus God did it. He did it. He made it. Acts chapter 3, verse 5 to 8. Let's listen again. You are not the only people that have struggled with the future plans of this world. There have been apostles like you and I. They too were struggling with their own agendas. But Jesus Christ has only one. One. Let's read this. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they were asking him, saying, Lord, is it at this time you are restoring the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, 
It is not for you to know times or epochs which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Are, they, are we different from these people? Their goal is to see the kingdom restored. It's to see David sitting on his throne. It's to see the, the political structures and geographical, all the blessings of the land of Israel to come to pass. This is their goal. And most of my African brothers that I love of two years ago, I talked with them. We all have the goals to come to America. If we can make some good money, we can support back our families. There's no sin about that. America, all over the world, they are looking for oil. They are looking for gold and silver. And they send back to their nation and make a lot of money. There's no sin for Africans to come and look for money. There's no sin for the whole American people to take three months vacation. To go enjoy Alaska, to go enjoy, uh, uh, you know, Africa or Kenya or Malta. There's no sin about that. There's no sin for you to build your house and plan to do it. There's no sin. But there is a problem. If you are not on the move, if you are not understanding the priority of God's agenda, which is first, nothing to gain in the world, a soul one to be saved. Your agendas are nothing and they will collapse. You build a house, you will die and leave it. You build a house, you fix it back after some years. You get married, you bury your husband, you bury your wife. You give birth to children, they died or you died and lived there. There is nothing in this world. You are born, you become old. You have white hairs. I'm 45 years old. I used to be one here. I used to pee pee in my mother's house. She would change the napkin and wash them. I used to do that. I'm a big guy now. And I'm getting soon to get Elizabeth to marry. Maybe one day she's 15 years. I don't know when she will get married. I'm looking forward. I'm, ge- I'm going. I don't come back. And every day in our lives we are going. There is nothing in this world. There's no sin to plan for your word. But you see, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you'll be my witness. Don't, don't ask me about the program I have, the agenda I have for the world. Seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything will be added unto you. Don't worry. If you become a child of God, you are born in a family. God will take care of you. God knows your problem. God knows I was sick at the airport and he sent my African brother and the wife was a pharmacist and he called the wife, come to Detroit airport. Come and pick me with the medicine for Pastor Solomon. I just came to know him here at the airport, Washington. My God is alive. My God knows what I need. My God knows my problems. My God knows everything. He knows your problems more than you can imagine. He knows what you need, but he says what? You do first my will. You come to my agenda. You will wake up and go and seek people to be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 3 to 4. He says, he wants everybody. All men, all color, all nations to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. There's only one truth. There are not two truths. Somebody asked me, Pastor Solomon, how do you people baptize? Don't ask me how we baptize. I am not we. Ask me what the Bible says. Jesus said you baptize them in the name of the Father because the Father Choose me before the foundation of the world. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 to 4. He did a job that the Son did not do, that the Holy Spirit did not do, that then you baptize them in the name of the Father. And, I'm not done. Baptize them in the name of the Son, because the Son died on the cross and paid for my sins. I will never be saved if Jesus did not die on the cross for my sins. Baptize them in the name of Jesus. And he said, baptize them in the name of the Holy Spirit. Watch out. I'm still struggling with my sinful nature. And you know what? Don't worry. I've sealed you. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. 
You have heard the word, Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. You hear the word, you believed, and you were sealed by the Holy Spirit. There's only one truth. One truth about salvation. We are saved by grace through faith, not by works. And it's a gift from God. You need to ask God to give you that gift. You need to say, Jesus, I want to be saved. Save me. He is the Savior. We don't save people, but we lead them to the Savior. And Jesus saves them. There's only one truth. And God wants people to be saved. And he wants them to know the one truth about baptism. The one truth about communion, the one truth about the position of the woman in the church, the one truth about true worship, the true worship of worship God in spirit and in truth. It doesn't talk about the piano. It doesn't talk about the guitar. It doesn't, don't, don't, don't enter in this kind of debate. He said, worship me in spirit and in truth. Is it the song you are singing? Is it working with your relationship with me? Are you correct? Are you pure? Are you clean? Because if it doesn't work there, it will not work when you sing for me. Do, do, do you know the story of the Samaritan woman? That Samaritan woman? But she was hallowed. But what did she say to Jesus? We Samaritan, we worship on this mountain. And you the Jews, you worship in the temple. Jesus said, Neither in the temple, nor in this mountain. But where? But where? But where? But where? In spirit and in truth. There's only one way to worship God. In spirit and in truth. See? God wants people to be saved. First Timothy 2, verse 3 to 4. But he wants them to know the truth. You are blessed. You know what I hate? But we call ourselves the Bible, the whole Bible, and nothing else but the Bible. I was a teacher in one high school, and the people asked me, Pastor Solomon, are you going to teach moral instruction? I said, of course. I want to teach moral instruction. I said, but what are the things you will teach? I said, the things I will teach? The Bible. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is not a, a school of theology. I said, the theology is what? Study the word of God. Which kind of philosophy, which kind of moral, which kind of psychiatrist I can be if the word of God cannot minister to the heart of man, nothing can change the heart of man. The word of God is the power of God unto salvation. We preach the word as it is intended in the text. We preach what the and then the text, the word, by the power of the Holy Spirit will change people's lives. Jesus said, don't worry about when I will restore the kingdom. Worry about one thing. Is my neighbor saved? What about my grandfather if he died today? What about my, my, my boss if he died today? I have been hiding myself as a Christian before him. But what about him? He wants people to be saved. He wants people to come to the knowledge of the truth. Friends, Luke chapter 19, verse 10, Jesus gives his agenda. Hey, brother. Luke 19, verse 10. Read in American accent, please. I want them to hear the word of God with American accent. Today, salvation has come, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Hey, when you see Jesus Christ on the street, he's on the street. People don't know. <laughs> he has one agenda. Zacchaeus, cast down. I must stay in your house today. That's God's agenda. When you see people, you want them to be safe. That's God's agenda. Give all the money to people. Fix their house. Change their style of life. Bring the war to the, to the society. Good things, good things. Give them the clothes, good things. But if you don't plant the word of God in their heart and tell them how to get saved, Jesus, you do nothing. 
It's not only today. In the time of Jesus, 5,000 men, uh, 5,000 men were killed. In John chapter 6, they eat, they ate, and they were satisfied. What about women? How many women do you think were there? They are always more than us. What about the children? We talk about one million, two million, I don't know. They were. And the next day, they look for Jesus. Oh Lord, we were looking for you. Where have you been? Oh, you don't look for me. You don't look for me. Shh. You have eaten. You saw the miracle. You don't need me. You need the things. Nothing is new. When we are missionaries, we go somewhere. Some people come for money. Some will come because of the skin. You are America. America. Marines. New York. That's what we know about America. When my brother are here, they can tell you. When we are in Africa, we think that life is easy. My brothers in Africa think that all Africans who are here make thousand, thousand dollars. Send us the money, please. We have been having trouble. You guys are there for long. Send us the money. We have pressure. Since I came here, I'm under pressure. Pastor Salomon, bring me a laptop. Pastor Salomon, bring me a phone, iPad. I myself don't have iPad. I myself don't have iPhone. I have my Samsung Chinese. That works when it wants and when it doesn't want. Don't be angry sometimes. That's why I'm not all the time connected. But they want me to bring them iPad. Because the thing that is get them. They don't know how heavy and typical it is to live in America. Friends, when we see them, what do they need? The things of the world. And Jesus said, you want to secure your life on earth? You lose it. You want to protect your future? You lose it. But you give it to me. I'll take it. You give me your life? I'll take it. Shh, listen to this. I'm one of the most important person in America right now. You know why? I have Americans driving me. Big, big, big guys. They were big directors of big companies. They drive me. Everybody's waiting for me. They fix my bed, my house, my food. They do everything for me. I'm the king. I'm so important. But you know why? Just because Jesus lives in me. Just because Jesus saved me and gave me good mothers and good people who love the Lord. And they humble themselves before me. And we walk together. In Christ, we have everything. I don't need. This was given to me in my 45th birthday in June. One of my daughter in Christ bought this from Ivory Coast in Africa. They made this. She bought for me. She came and gave me. And I told her, she's in Ivory Coast now. I say, my daughter Yvette, I wear your shirt every single Sunday in America. Africa made. Don't you like it? I'm the king because I'm a son of a king. Friends, we are important, all of us, but only when we come to Christ. Without Jesus, we are empty. We are nothing. I'm going to accompany my baby. I want my baby to go and play the baseball. I want him to be a big star of the baseball. That's good for you. But you don't want your child to come to know Jesus. To become the big play of baseball or basketball or soccer like in Cameroon is nothing. Without Jesus, we are empty. Friends, the Lord said his mission was to seek. Where are they? Let's go. Get out. out. You will never see them if you remain in your house. You will never see them if you don't open your mouth. If you will never see them, you don't seek them. People are lost. They need Jesus. But they think that they are well in where they are. They are sick. Because Satan is planting them. They think that when they will get the whole world, their soul will be satisfied. Never. Foolish. You know what Jesus said to that man? Fool. 
Oh, I would destroy this. I would pack the things. I would do this and pack the things. I would do it. Fool. Today, I will take what belongs to me. There is something in you that belongs to God. You have a soul there. And whenever, whenever God wants to take that soul, he shall take it away. Don't allow that soul to perish and go to hell. Don't allow your neighbor to go to hell. And he will be crying. <laughs> oh, Pastor Solomon, you were at that airport. I greeted you. You did not talk to me about Jesus. <laughs> now I am in hell, dying forever. I don't want any soul to cry because of me. Let's go. Let's go and proclaim that word. How would they be saved? How can they be saved? Let's read that. American accent. How then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him who they have not heard? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news uh, of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of Christ. But I say, surely they have never heard, have they? Indeed, they have. Their voice has gone out into all the earth, and their words to the ends of the world. It wasn't then, at that time. But now it's getting there. We have some, I don't know, you do it here in America. <laughs> Enough. Boys making money now. You know how they make money? They take and they polish the feet and put the nails and draw the American flag, Nigerian flag. Come on. Where? Their feet. They want their feet. Women want their feet to be beautiful. But you know what Jesus said? You want your feet to be beautiful? Let's go. Preach. Preach what? Jesus Christ crucified. Preach whom? Jesus. Preach what? He died on the cross for your sin. He was buried. He raised the third day. Repent from your sin. Give your life to Jesus. And you will be saved. When is the last time you did that? I just went to a new church in my country, in a Muslim area. This church has been static. There's no Cameroonian living in that church. They are surrounded by Cameroonian. It is a church of refugees. And there's no Cameroonian inside that church. I said, brother, all these people are from where? They say Central Africa. I said, good. Praise God. We are one in Africa. We know it. But guess what? Why is it that no Cameroonian is in that church? They don't go. They keep the people who are there. Baramo, baramingi, sango, Tony, ayekiape, Tony, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. They speak the dialect. You go to other countries, you see Cameroonian church. We don't see Ghanaian there. It's Cameroonian people. They come to America. They only have their church. Why? They don't. You go to many churches. How many people we have last year? 50. How many do we have this year? 51 or 52. How many were added? Two. Why? Shh. How many people were here today? How many are we here? This morning. 50? 40? If each of us here, each of us here, take one soul in this town and proclaim the name of Jesus faithfully, praying for that soul, do the work faithfully. Be nice. One soul. I'm not asking you to take two. I said one. After one month, if we are 40, how many people will become the next one? Now, if the 80 people, each of them, just take one soul. I'm not asking you to take two. One. Telling them about Jesus. So, the work can come to the end. And Jesus said, I will be with you to the end of the world. We have forgotten that. We have forgotten that this world will come to the end. We have forgotten that the nice building. 
at the end. God says, I will not burn with war again. I will burn with fire. Fire will burn, consume everything in this world. Everything that we pack, we pack, we pack. Why do I need five cars? Why? One is enough. No, I want a Honda. No, one Mitsubishi now. Oh, I need a Renault. Oh, no, no, no. Mercedes. Why do you need all this? Each car will do only one walk. Carry you. The cars will never change. They only carry us. Are they Mitsubishi? Are they 2018 model? 2016, they do the same work. Don't pack things in this world. Don't be busy for the things of this world. Satan has blinded us. And I'm telling you that with the 80 people, we take one person in one month. How, much, how many people would we be here? 80 people, take each person one person in one month. How many? 160. Are we not growing? The church will never grow because the pastor makes it to grow. The church always grows because all the saints are in, I mean, animosity, animosity all together. The saints say with their pastors, let's go. Let's do it. Mom, good morning. You know what? My, my teachers came to me today and asked me, what do I believe God created the heaven and the earth? Mom, it's quite a great opportunity. I was having a CD of Dr. Wilcom. Do you have it again, Mom? Please, I need it. I'm going to give her. And you know what? I told her that this is what the Bible says. By faith, we believe. And my teacher said, faith, 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 faith. I said, no, no, no. Faith comes from hearing. And hearing from the word of God. I need to tell her. If I don't tell her, she will not know. If we don't preach, if we don't tell them, if we don't proclaim, if we don't open the mouth, if we don't share the tracks, if we don't go, if we don't go, people will perish and get perished. Because of you and I. Because we are content with what we have. We are content with our Christianity. We are like the protocol sons of brother. When the father is celebrating the coming of the son, <laughs> praise God, my son was dead. Now he is alive. What is happening there in my house? Your father has a The white comment. The guy looks so nice and so important. What? What? I have been with my father all my life. <laughs> God does not need righteous people to repent again. He wants sinners to repent. What a wrong attitude. Don't we have that attitude? Are we not selfish? Are we not holding the Jesus in us? Are we not so selfish? Pastor Solomon, I'm Sorry, Pastor Paul, how old are you? How old are you? 77. How old was Moses when he went to mission? So you still have three years before you start the ministry. There you go. (laughs) Nobody is old to go. Nobody is poor to go. My African brother says sometimes, Pastor Solomon, we don't have money to do practorium. We don't have the ink. We don't. But I was a missionary there. And I used to trek. Jim March knows the road. When Jim March saw that situation, they came through the lake of the American team. He said, Solomon, you used to climb these hills? I said, yes. No way. He talked back to his church, Peru, to the conservative grace president. They said, Solomon, we need to buy you a bike, motorbike. That's why I got a bike. The Lord knows my problem. He knows your problems. He knows when to give, how to give. I'm not serving the CGBCI. I'm not serving Pastor Aaron. I'm not serving the Eagle Creek Grace Bible Church. I know who I'm serving. Jesus Christ. 
If you use the eagle creek in my life, praise God. If you use this man, praise God. But you know what? The glory will be his. He's the doer. How will they believe if there is no preacher? God needs you. What? Yes. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 8. Whom shall we send? Whom shall we say? Whom shall we say? What? Who shall work for us? God needs somebody to work for him. I don't believe that. You are God. You can save whomever you want, whenever you want, however you want. Why do you need me? Because he wants to bless you. God can save people he wants. Jonah, you go. No, Lord. You go. You can save those people are terrible, bad people. Kill all those Africans. They are miserable. They are always in war. Let them die there with Ebola. Let them die there. What? Who created the Africans? God. Who created the Indians? God. Who created the Americans? God. Who created the Arab country? God. He wants them to be saved. There's a young boy in the Bible camp that I'm going to lead for one week to be there. The young boy, his name is Cyrus. I came to know Cyrus who was seven years old. And Cyrus said one thing to me. Every time he's close to me. Everybody's going, but he's always close to me. And Mary looked at me and said, Solomon, you have a new baby here in America. I said, yes, Cyrus is my new baby. Pastor Solomon, do you people have snakes in Africa? Yes. Do you people... See lions? Yes. He is alive in Africa. Pastor Cyrus. Confirm. I said, yes, it is me. And you know what? He said, Pastor Solomon, are you coming to the conference? I said, yes, he said, Sinadia will be there. He said, my father, my mother, my family, they are coming to pick you. You can come. The program is too choked, so I don't know if I can stay. But anyway, we will see. I didn't pay the ark. They paid the ark for me. I just received a message from dear pastor. Cyrus went and talked to that pastor, the youth pastor of his church in Cincinnati. is a Baptist fundamental church too. But you know what? The pastor said, Pastor Soma, I want to see you. I want to talk with you. Because Cyrus is my missionary now. But you know what? Cyrus was touched. But I see an African guy like me, zealous for Christ. And not have they have. He doesn't have a car. I don't have a house. But I have all those things in Christ. Did I not stay in a mighty house? Do you think that in my country I can stay in the room that I was staying? With a carpet. Beautiful. You see the type of car that I... Look at the type of car that drives me. In Christ we have all. Cyrus wants to be a missionary in a Muslim country. How can God do that? He wants people to go. Are you ready to go? What is your main plan in your life? What do you really think is so important in this world? Your family, you shall lose it. Your job, you will lose it. You, yourself, you will come to pass. There is nothing in this world. We are strangers and we are passengers. We own nothing. We are only stewards. We own nothing. Our cats, our dogs, our home, we own nothing. Somebody has to preach. Somebody has to go. For I am with you, and no man will attack you in order to harm you. For I have many people in this city. And he settled there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. So wow! While Gal so while Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews with one accord rose up against Paul and brought him before the judgment seat. Mission organization, they make me to laugh. You know, this small African short man sitting in the middle. So they know. Do they know? Do they know? 
this man was sitting close to me. Do they know? They don't know me. They see this small African sitting somewhere. Hey, shh, shh. I am created into the image of God. Hey, shh. I am the temple of the Holy Spirit. God dwells in me. Hey, listen. Don't look at this carapace. It's nothing. The God who made the heaven and the earth is dwelling in me. Don't neglect me. Don't despise me. Don't see me nothing. I am creating. I don't have the world. I don't have the car. I don't have the dollars. But I have Jesus. And there is no difference in this world. For now, you think there is a difference when we go to heaven. My works for the ministry of the Lord. My blessings. Be careful. May be more. And they are forever than what you are. My goal is not to live in the world and get money. My goal is to proclaim the gospel of the one who saved me. My goal is like him. He's coming to save. Goal, what God wants you to have. He wants you to have that goal. Because he had that goal. Did you ever ask yourself a question? How many houses Jesus built? Did you ever ask a question? How many sheep or horses he bought when he was on earth? Did you ever ask you a question when Jesus died? How much property he left on, on earth? He came to do one thing, the will of his father. The will of his father was to seek and to save those who are perishing. And he died on the cross for them. And for the whole world. Friends, Paul was so persecuted that he was tired. He did not know what to do. And the Lord said, don't stop talking about me. Don't stop. Don't allow discouragement to take you away. Do the work. Preach the word. Preach. Do it. For I have a multitude of people in this town. And that's what God says. In Indianapolis, you are living there, Eagle Creek. I have many people in that area that need to be saved. Oh, I'm selling ice glass. I am working in the school. I am doing this. Lord, I have people there that I want them to be saved through you. We are on mission. We have to go. See the last verse I want to share with you this morning? The gospel is such a blessing. I don't know if it was there. Okay, go ahead again. This last verse. Listen to what happened to Saul in his life. The apostle Paul. And immediately there fell from his eyes something like scales. And he regained his sight. And he got up and was baptized. And he took food and was strengthened. Now for several days he was with the disciples who were at Damascus. And immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, saying, He is the Son of God. He did not believe before. He was arresting people. Saul has a different agenda. His agenda, hold me those guys. Put them in jail. Let them be killed. There is only one God. Jehovah is the only God. And anybody who claims to be another God, kill him. That was his agenda. But God's agenda was not that Saul be killed. Listen to this. There is war in my country. Like in many countries in Africa. And I was so shocked. One Christian sent me a message in WhatsApp. Because our president is to receive a very great occultic Rosicrucian. And he was to receive that man. And that sister belonged, she joined on a different church. And in that church, in the name of Jesus, I cancel Satan and destroy him and to the lake of fire. They send Satan, Satan in the lake of fire every day. But Satan has never stayed there. He always come back and stop him. I say, I pray that that man will die. They start to pray for that president of Malta. He is a leader of Malta. I think he's the president of Malta. They have a different name, title. 
Malta, the country of Malta, is a very big, high level of the Christian victims. Our president should sit with the people, discuss about the issue of our country, but instead inviting people or cultic society to come and walk against I don't know what. But I said to that girl, is it what I told you? Did I tell you that you should pray for people to die? Did I tell you that you should pray for people? Uh, God cut them their hands and destroy them. Is it what I told you? She wrote me back. My dear father, I'm sorry. I have abandoned the truth you taught me. I taught you this. Jesus wants everybody to be saved. And come to the knowledge of the truth. I told you that Jesus Christ did not come for the good. He came for those who are sick. That they will not perish, but come to the light. That's why we need to go to Africa, to Malaysia, to India, to China. Let's go. Let's go. Open the mouth. Give the track. Visiting, encouraging, preaching the gospel. Jesus Christ. People are dying. People are dying. <laughs> they are dying because we don't go. Because we don't preach. Because we are lazy. Because we take different agendas. We don't prioritize the agenda of God. He has won. I will build my church. He has won. Seek to save those who have perished. He has won. Let people be saved. <laughs> the things of this world that deceive us. Second as lie also. He lied people. He's telling them, your life is fine. You are forever. You are not becoming old. Things will be better. Look for money and work for it. And people are dying. I hope this morning, When you look at your plan of the day, one time a day, don't make program of one week, one time a day. Seek a way you can talk to somebody about Jesus Christ. There is nothing this way. I invite my pastor Aaron to come and challenge you in American accent this morning because if God is moving your heart, we have a missionary trip in January in Africa. God wants people to come. God wants you to be warm out again. There's a neighbor somewhere. There is somebody somewhere. He needs Jesus. And you don't want to go. Don't make God to force you to go. He forced Jonas. And that is not good. Say, Lord, here I am. Send me. Open the door. And I will preach Christ. Open the door. And my agenda will be first yours. Before man. Let's go. What a challenge brought to us today by Pastor Solomon. You know, it uh, really hits my heart to see his emotion, to see his love for the Lord, to see his desire to see people come to know Christ. We were up till over one o'clock in the morning just speaking on those issues. What is the agenda? You know, I, I uh, just challenge us today to ask ourselves, is our agenda the agenda of the Lord's? As we can get so caught up in the things of go that are going on in the world, will we answer the call to be God's disciples, to be his lights in the world, to have a heart for the Lord? And I know we do, but maybe it's time we look into our lives and say, hey, Lord, is my heart where it needs to be? 
It's my desire to serve you where it needs to be. It's my desire to talk to somebody about you where it needs to be. I ask you today, as Pastor Solomon uh, brought this challenge, will we take the challenge to seek to win one? Will we take this challenge to seek to win one person to Christ, to ask God to use us? Though we do not have the power to save anybody, as we were told today, that's all by God. But will we be his mouthpieces? Will we have that heart? So what a challenge, amen? But you know, one thing we can take great joy in and great encouragement is if you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, praise God for what a wonderful gift of grace and love. Amen? If you're here today and you don't know this Jesus, He is the Son of God. He is God. He came to die for us. He came that we might have life. I ask you, do not walk away today without receiving Him. Please come forward if you'd like to know Christ as your Lord and Savior and we can share with you. Pastor Solomon asked me to give an altar call that if you want to be somebody who says, let's go, Lord, I'll go. Come forward today. Encourage him and say, hey, I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying for you when you go to Africa. I'll be back here supporting you. But brother, while you're out going and you're out being obedient to Christ, I'm going to pray that God give me the power and strength to do the same right here, right here in our Jerusalem. Let's sing.